Hey guys, welcome to Learn Feng Shui, where you'll learn Feng Shui from a classical point of view, taking out the myth and superstition. If you like weekly tips as well as fun folklore tales, you'll enjoy learning Feng Shui with me. Hey guys, and welcome to Folklore Friday. Today I'm going to talk to you about Xin Yang, who is considered the father of Chinese medicine. Hey you, would you like to learn more about feng shui and want to go a little bit deeper? The feng shui club is actually perfect for you. So it's an exclusive part of my website available at fengshuibycandice.com. And for only $15 a month, you get exclusive access to all sorts of information that includes flying star feng shui, date selection, animal sign clashes, animal signs that come by, the ways to uh, best use each day, all sorts of information, as well as how to do feng shui activations and the days that are best to do them. So if you're interested in learning about this, you can head to my website at fengshuibycanis.com, which of course is linked to down below. There's a seven day free trial. And if you decide you like it, it's only $15 a month after that. Hey guys, so the Xin Yang was considered the father of Chinese medicine. Um, as we know, the basis of Chinese medicine is using herbs to balance out the yin and yang qi. Um, that's as far as I kind of know about traditional Chinese medicine. But um, one of the most interesting things in the way I actually found this gentleman, so I will just start off by saying this is going to be part one of a two-part series, um, and it's going to focus a little bit different. So, um, the way I found Shen Young is I was watching a documentary called Cannabis, A Lost History, where it went over all the different ancient uses of, you know, documentation of ancient use of cannabis. And I just thought it was so interesting. So um, he was said to writ have written the book, The Divine Farmer's Classic of Materia Medica, which he um, kind of documented all 365 of these herbs. So let's take a little bit of look of the legendary Xin Yang, the father of Chinese medicine. Going to you from Toxipedia.com, which I'll link to, of course, in the show notes, um, talks about Xin Yang here. And of course, the father of Chinese medicine noted for tasting 365 different herbs. Um, according to the legend, Xin Yang was a father of Chinese medicine and pharmacology. He sought out and investigated hundreds of herbs, documenting many of them in his aforementioned book and is still worshipped today by Chinese medicine men. Um, Shen Yang was the ancient Chinese emperor believed to have lived 5,000 years ago. He's often referred to as the Yan Emperor and the literal meaning of his name translates to the divine farmer because he was credited to bringing agriculture to ancient China. He is widely respected in Chinese mythology also and is accredited as being the ancestor to the Vietnamese people as well as the Chinese. So it is debated as with the many different uh, ancient Chinese, f you know, figures, ancient Chinese kind of deities, these mythological people, the emperor, was there really one person named Xin Yang? Well, that's a little bit deba <laughs> debated. Um, it says here on Wikipedia, it various, variously translates a divine farmer or divine husbandman. And it does state that he was a mythological ruler who became a deity in Chinese and Vietnamese folk regions. Um, he is venerated as a cultural hero in China and in Vietnam. Xin Yang has at times been counted amongst the three sovereigns or known as the three kings, who was an ancient group of deities or deified kings in prehistoric China. Xin Yang has been thought to have taught the ancient Chinese not only the practices of agriculture, but also the uses of herbal drugs. So he's accredited with various inventions, which I thought was pretty interesting. Not only did they say he, um, you know, documented this use and um, created the, the use of herbs and, cr and created the book, um, the, you know, about the herbal use, but he also is said to have invented the hoe, the plow, the axe, um, credited to digging wells, uh, creating irrigation, preserving stored seeds, 
and um, just all kinds of different stuff. He said he created the weekly farmer's market, the Chinese calendar, which is the 24 G Chi, which I talk about a lot, um, you know, the 24 solar term. So it's said that this person, this enlightened divine being, um, brought all these things to ancient China. And so therefore he's really venerated and really um, thought highly of for helping the ancient Chinese learn more about agriculture and farming. So having transitioned from being a culture of hunting and gathering, um, they were able to now, you know, plow their fields, they're able to cultivate and have modern agriculture. And it said that this actually helped the people transition from a diet of meat, clams, and wild fruit to one based on grains and vegetables. And of course, this also helped in the development of herbal medicine because they were then able to plant and cultivate this, uh, the herbs that they needed for uh, medicinal purposes. And also with ancient Chinese tales, there's usually some sort of um, divine, this divine being when they're small, when they're newborn babies, uh, or when they're very young, they're said to possess different gifts. And Shen Yang was no different. Um, it says here on the Britannica.com that tales of his youth relate that he spoke after three days, walked within a week, and he could plow the field at age three. So it was said even from his uh, very young, <laughs> very being very young, he was very uh, gifted also. And so they knew he was going to be something special. So the book itself is actually broken down into three different sort of chapters or volumes. And it's said to represent the herbs that represent heaven, earth, and man, which is, of course, a concept we see in feng shui and Chinese metaphysics. So the first volume it is included it includes 120 drugs that are harmless to humans and that is said to be the heaven uh, aspect of you know heavenly properties of these drugs their heavenly uh, influences so it includes ginseng orange cinnamon licorice and cannabis which i was interested in and will talk about and devote a full episode to all in of its own and these of course known as the heaven herbs the second volume or chapter is the earth herbs or the i'm sorry of the man herbs i apologize and um it's uh, 120 therapeutic substances that are intended to treat the sick but have toxic or potentially toxic properties of varying degrees so in this category we find ginger peonies and cucumber um, of course, that's the man aspect of it. And of course, here we have the earth. So in the last volume, there are 125 entries corresponding to substances which have a strong or violent action or psychological functions and are often poisonous. Um, rhubarb and pitted fruits, peaches, which I'm assuming is probably the pits from those, those fruits, because as we all know, um, they can contain, contain uh, some substances that we can't you know we, we're not supposed to consume so these are known as lower herbs or the earth herbs included in the book are very beautiful drawings that um they're you know depicting each of the herbs that it's talking about and um, it's a very interesting book and i noticed that it is uh, transliterated into English and I hope to score me a copy. They do have them on Amazon, I noticed. So this is something I'm pretty interested in, if not just to have a copy for this, the resource or just to look at. The original Xinyang herbal is long gone, but a version that has four chapters was used by another writer called Tao Hongyang, I believe I pronounced that correctly, <laughs> to produce what is called the Xinyang Bin Kao Jin, which is the published work that we actually see today. So if you go look at um, the classic of the farmer's classic of uh, Medica Materia, this is the one you'll actually find. Um, here it says the text has twice as many herbs as the original and arranged by type of material. So it's actually, I kind of looked through it online and again, I kind of want to buy it just for, uh, for fun, but um, it is broken down really into minerals, trees, herbs, and the categories, or of course the upper, upper, middle, and lower, which I just talked about. Sections copied from the original were in red ink, and while new material and commentary of various herbal authorities were written in black ink, thus preserving the original version. So I guess there's, you know, all the annotated versions. Um, that way you can see the original, and then you can see uh, probably the author's notes, which that's not very uncommon. A lot of books in ancient China, and really throughout history, um, and, uh, even the Yijing, 
um, has different commentary from different philosophers and stuff like that. Unfortunately, it is said that Xin Yang had an unfortunate ending, indulging a little bit too much in his work and actually poisoning himself. And so all the accounts that I've read online um, kind of attribute his death to poisoning, which is very unfortunate. And But he's, again, very honored amongst the Chinese people. And of course, in addition to having a book name after him, it says here, Xin Yang has been honored by having a region rich in plant resources named after him as well. So Xin Yang Jia, or it's called really uh, literally translates into Xin Yang's bookshelf or Xin Yang's ladder, which is the legendary story about him, um, says that he carried out his investigation of herbs in this area and is not actually far from his birthplace. Xin Yang Jia is a high plateau in central China which mountains, ridges, and rivers crisscrossing in this area. Um, it has a main forested area and it lies, it says here, between the Yangtze River and Han River. The area has become famous today as a place where the bear man, which is a Bigfoot or Yeti, sometimes uh, is said to reside, is, is said to have sightings of him. There's six mountain peaks that are about 3,000 meters high, with the highest peak being about 3,100 meters. A large stream runs through it and is called the Xinyang Stream or Xinyang River. Much, much of this area, the Xinyang Jia, is now a nature preserve, and there are numerous rare plants there, and it's known for its ginkgo trees, its different lilies, funguses, um, and it says altogether there are about 3,000 plant species in the area with 34 endangered species that are under government protection. So even though, of course, he had this, um, this end to his life, he's very honored again and has this beautiful area named after him. I'm looking at a picture here online and man, it's just amazing. You can look in this lush green area and a little fun feng shui fact, it's said that when you have mountains, the greener they are, they're called green dragons, the greener they are, the more fertile and lush and you know, better the, the better feng shui is said to be in the green mountains. So if you ever go to a region that has these super green mountains, you'll know that it has really good feng shui. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this Folklore Friday as much as I had making it. It was very interesting learning about Xing Yang and um, his, all his exploits and, you know, all the all the different herbs that he's said to have uh, discovered and documented. So if you, again, want to learn more about any of these um, topics, I'll put all the links. There was a lot of different links below that I actually, you know, didn't really mention. So I'll put a, all the links below and you can read a little bit more if you'd like to learn more. Um, again, if you want to join me for a Feng Shui workshop make sure you follow the link below and um, free feng shui workshop i'm offering the third sunday of every month so i hope to see you there be sure to support the podcast by hitting that subscribe button and sharing with your family and friends who you think may be interested as well as leaving a review if you'd like to learn more about feng shui and Chinese metaphysics, visit my website at fengshuibycandice.com.